Blender or FreeCAD when modeling for 3D printing. I'm taking this design and modeling in both applications, then 3D printing. First up is Blender. We can start in the default Blender scene. In the Scene Properties tab, let's expand units. I'll be using the Prusa slicer, so we'll want to export in millimeter. Changing the scene scale to 0.001 will let us export between Blender and the slicer software seamlessly. Now, some slicers may differ, but the Prusa slicer works with millimeters. In here, we can set the length to be millimeter, and that way all dimensions can be inputted and will be displayed millimeter. We can press N to open the sidebar. In the View tab, we can set the clip start to 1 millimeter. Then increase the clip end to 1000 meters. Anytime you adjust the unit scale, these settings usually need adjusting. We can press A to select everything. Press X and delete. Make sure the cursor is at world origin by pressing Shift plus S and choosing Cursor to world origin. Then from the Add menu in Mesh, let's add a plane. In the Item tab is where we can set the dimensions. In the X dimension field, we can input 15. Tab into the Y and we can input 50. When you change the dimensions of an object in object mode, you need to apply them as you get something that is called non-uniform transforms. In this case, a non-uniform scale. So let's press Ctrl plus A and apply scale. That resets the scale value to 1 here. Now we can tab into edit mode and start shaping this object. Let's open the modifiers tab. We can add a solidify modifier and give this plane thickness. In the thickness field, let's input 2 millimeters. Then press Ctrl plus R and add an edge loop. Left click, then right click to leave this center. Then add a second, so press Ctrl plus R. We can left click once, then drag right to the end. Now press G, Y, input 17.5 and enter. Let's repeat that again and add another edge loop. Drag this right to the end. Now press G, Y, input 11.12 and enter. To save time, we can select these two end vertices. Press X and delete vertices. Now in the modifiers tab, let's add a mirror modifier. We can drag this to first in the stack. Then we can disable the X and enable the Y. Now enable clipping. We can also enable this option here that lets us see the vertices in edit mode. Let's select the three center edge loops here. Press G, Z, input 5 and enter. Let's come back to object mode for a moment. In the modifiers tab, we can click the drop down and apply the mirror modifier. Now we can tab back into edit mode. We can select the center edge. Press X and dissolve edges. Next, we need to create some subtraction objects, so let's tab back to object mode. Then from the Add menu in Mesh, add a cube. In the X dimension, this will be 7.5. Tab into the Y and we can input 7.64. Tab into the Z and input 20. But it isn't too important once the cube clears the clip. In the Snap menu, let's switch this to Vertex. Now press GX and we can press and hold Ctrl and snap to the outside here. Let's tab into Edit Mode now. This back face will be 5mm, so we need to drag this edge back half that difference. So press GY, input minus 1.32 and enter. Repeat that for the other side and drag this in 1.32 along the positive Y. Let's tab back. Select the clip first and in the Modifiers tab, let's add a Boolean modifier. In the Object field, we can choose the cube. That will subtract the cube shape from the object. In the Outliner, let's hide the visibility of that object until we're ready to apply the modifier. Now we need another object and just make sure the cursor is at world origin. Then from the Add menu in Mesh, let's add another cube. In the X field, input 2.5. Tab into the Y and input 8.13. Then in the Z, we can input 20 here. Now let's tab into Edit Mode. Select it all. Press G, Shift Z to eliminate Z from the move and snap this to the outside vertex here. Let's select the clip again. In the Modifiers tab, let's add another Boolean modifier. This time we can select cube.001. 
We can select this object now. In the modifiers tab, let's add a mirror modifier. Check on the Y axis here also. If any faces aren't cutting correctly, just tab in and move the face out past the clip and that should fix the issue. We can tab back now. In the outliner, we can switch off the visibility of cube.001. The final subtraction will be two holes, so make sure the cursor is at world zero. Then from the add menu in mesh, we can add a cylinder. To get good resolution on the circle, we can open the options box below here. Increase the vertices to 128. Set the radius to 1.5. Then the depth to 20 millimeters. We can tab into edit mode. Select it all and press G, Y, input minus 20.94 and enter. In the modifiers tab, we can add a mirror modifier. Switch off the X and on the Y. Let's tab back and select the clip. We can add the third Boolean modifier. From the object field, select the cylinder object. Move all three Boolean modifiers up past the solidify modifier and have these executed first. In the outliner, we can hide this cylinder also and check if the Boolean modifier is working as expected. Let's make a duplicate of this before we apply the modifiers, so press Shift plus D and right click. Press F2 and rename this clip. Press M and create a new collection. Rename this clip and add this in here. We can disable the original collection. In the modifiers tab, we can apply all three Boolean modifiers and also the solidify modifier. The final part is to round the corner, so let's tab in here. Select all the edges around here. Press Ctrl plus B to bevel, then roll the mouse wheel to increase the number of cuts and add resolution. Input 1.5 and enter. The options box appears and you can make some further adjustments to the bevel from here. Maybe increase the resolution of the rounds. That's the modeling complete and we can now check for any issues before exporting. First, I'd like this sitting on the grid floor, so press G, Z, input 2 and enter. Now control plus A and apply the location transform. In the overlays menu, we can check if the face orientation is correct. Blue faces are front, so these are fine. We can switch this back off. The model is now ready to export to the slicing software. So let's come to file, export and choose STL. Find a location to save the file. We'll need it again in a few minutes. In the name field, let's rename this clip underscore blender. Check on selected only. Now we can export this file. For the slicing, I'll be using the Prusa slicing software. So open that up or one of your choice. We can come to file and import. Navigate to where you saved the file. Select this and open. That imports and you can check the dimensions are correct here. The material I have selected is PLA and the printer is correct. So we can slice now. Once that completes, use the slider to preview the layering of the material. Maybe zoom in and get a better look at this. Once you're happy with the preview, we can export the G-code. I can save this here in this folder. The name will be fine, so export. I'll speed up the printing process. The model printed on the Prusa without issue. Check out the next video for the free CAD version of this model. In that video, I'll compare both the FreeCAD and Blender applications for modeling for 3D printing.